Hello team, welcome to my session on Coffee with Prab. And today we're going to discuss about some coffee shots of CSUM Domain 2. In this particular session, we're going to discuss some 10 and 15 questions, which is basically map with the concept of Domain 2 of risk management. If you're new to the channel, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss the future videos on a similar topic. I already uploaded a domain one questions, uh, questions and answers. You can check that and I'm sure that can also improve your see some question practice functions. So without wasting a time, let's start with the first part. Thank you. Okay. So question number one, what is the ultimate goal of effective risk management in the enterprise? So we are splitting this question into two part. What is the ultimate goal goal for what for a effective risk management in the enterprise okay so we're looking for the goal option a reduce risk to zero that is not possible we reduce risk to an acceptable level or reduce the risk to a limited impact but not to zero mitigate the risk is one of the treatment makes sense okay but we also have other treatment options because if you go by the risk management we have first step is identify risk second is basically analysis of the risk third is basically evaluation of the risk and fourth is basically called as a treatment of the risk identification analysis and evaluation overall this is called as a risk assessment and treatment is basically four type one is basically called accept avoid transfer and mitigate so mitigate is one of the treatment but that is not the ultimate goal uh, the third question, third option is identification of risk. Identification is one of the first step. That is not an ultimate goal. But by identifying, by mitigating, what we're doing is we're reducing risk to an acceptable level. That's why the answer is D for Delta. Let's move to the next question. Thank you. Good question. Which of the following, following mean these following should be considered when making a plan for risk management question we are in a present tense that we are in a process of making a risk management plan so what are the following need to be considered option a risk appetite definitely risk appetite is a level of risk the organization willing to accept to pursue the project so we have a two things here one is called risk capacity a level of risk the organization is willing to accept to pursue mission maximum risk that they can take and then we basically have a risk appetite Risk appetite is a level of risk we willing to take for a particular project. And risk tolerance is basically the current risk we have, level of deviation. So let's take an example, my salary is basically 5,000. That is my risk capacity. And or my basically business is 5,000. And in that, the maximum security breach we can bear is 2%. So that is a risk appetite. So tolerance is basically below or above. So when we basically planning a risk management functions, risk appetite is very important because based on risk appetite only, we drive all the initiatives. We validate all the initiatives. So option A, enterprise risk appetite can be considered. Mission and vision is very high level thing. So that we can ignore. Satisfy the regulatory requirement. It is one of the thing definitely we need to consider, but that is the only thing which is not true. Disaster recovery plan is an action that we create based on a risk that we identify. The most important factor we need to consider based on which we plan the risk function is risk appetite because it is the level of risk the organization willing to accept and we doing an assessment, we doing an evaluation to make sure it is below the appetite level. Okay, that's why the answer is A for alpha. Let's move to the next question. So which of the following best describe qualitative risk assessment so we have a two type of risk assessment one is called as a qualitative and one is basically called as a quantitative in qualitative we map the risk level of impact based on high low and medium but in the quantitative we basically map in terms of numbers that is a thin line difference example like earthquake occurrence it's going to be happen five times in a year and if it happened, the impact is also confidential level. So it is impact is five. So five into five is 10. So this is how we are using a numeric, but question talking about best describe qualitative. Okay. So option A assigning a numerical value to risk based on the impact and likelihood. This is applicable when we're doing a quantitative analysis. So A removed assessing a risk based on a statistical models and historical data. Again, in this, we are using some data and based on that, we're doing analysis. It is still a quantitative. 
ऑप्शन सी इवेल्यूटिंग रिस्क बेस ऑन एक्सपर्ट जजमेंट एंड सब्जेक्टिव क्राइटेरिया मेक सेंस बिकॉज सी आई एम डूइंग सी सम फ्रॉम लास्ट टेन ईयर एग्जाम्पल सो आई नो दिस टॉपिक इज इम्पॉर्टेंट बट आई एम नॉट श्योर इट विल बी देयर विद वॉट फ्रिक्वेंसी बट डेफिनेटली दैट टॉपिक इज इम्पॉर्टेंट सो आई एम यूजिंग माई जजमेंट आई एम यूजिंग सम सब्जेक्टिव क्राइटेरिया एंड बेस ऑन दैट वी डू द रिस्क असेसमेंट एंड ऑप्शन डी इज कंडक्टिंग इन डेप्थ एनालिसिस ऑफ वर्नेबिलिटी थ्रे दैट इज एप्लीकेबल इन द बोथ केसेस But I'm in the company from last ten year. I know data center is down. It has a big impact. I don't need to do any mathematical calculation in that case. So that is something is basically high level. But when we have a numbers in place, example last year we had this incidents, this kind of an activity happen, and this is the level of occurrence we have. So we use some numbers there. But in this case we are not using any numbers. So that's why the answer is C for Charlie. Evaluating risk based on the expert judgment and subjective criteria. It is faster. Qualitative risk assessment is faster. Okay, when we have a limited time, and we just need to map with high, low, and medium, we can go for a qualitative risk assessment. But you have a time, you want accurate data, and with that, you need want accuracy, preciseness, and all that. Then we can go for the quantitative. Okay, that's what the answer is. C for Charlie. Let's move to the next question. Thank you. Okay, so which of the following? Which when conducting a qualitative risk analysis, which of the following method is most likely yield dependent result okay which when conducting conducting is basically mean present tense when conducting a qualitative risk analysis which are the following methods is most likely to be yield it's not a method it's method okay sorry for that error option is statistical and analysis of historical data again the word statistics equal to numbers numbers is quantitative so a removed option b likely scenario with threats and impact actually yes because we do lot of analysis on possible threat possible impact so let's take example we are running a data center we assume that the possible threat is external threat if he going to hack my data center what is the impact so we do lot of threat scenario analysis of threats and impact because we don't have a numbers with us we don't have a past data with us so we just doing a assumption like example during a change management audit i found documentation is missing so i'm assuming if documentation is basically not there then it lead to the lack of poor governance no one will take the accountability so this is how i'm creating a scenario analysis of threat and impact and that is a common practice we do in a qualitative i'm working for the e-commerce i know very well if the website is basically down it has a big impact so this is how i did the scenario analysis suppose if if there is an attack from outside and server is unavailable what is the impact on the business penetration testing results it is a good data but that is not only the data based which we can use for qualitative which can be used in a quantitative also assigning numerical value to reduce value to risk based on impact and analysis the keyword itself say numerical so it is part of the quantitative analysis so only close option in this case is answer is b for beta let's move to the next question very good question in a effective risk analysis risk analysis two type qualitative and quantitative which two component should primarily be evaluated option a likelihood impact definitely c we already get the identification of threats we also get the information about the vulnerability and now we need to see if the threat is going to exploit the vulnerability what is the impact so i need to understand level of impact whether it is high low and medium so option a likelihood impact makes sense because that we can use both in a qualitative and quantitative vulnerability assessment is one of the data which can be used in a likelihood because vulnerability assessment give the idea about how many vulnerabilities we have and then we'll see how the threat is going to exploit the vulnerability risk transfer is one of the treatment we have okay and it will be come after the evaluation is done but still we are in a phase of evaluation financial impact is one of the impact we have but we also have other impact like regulatory information security business so the close option for me is basically a for alpha because likelihood impact is the overall parameter we basically use for analyzing a risk no matter it's a qualitative or quantitative in nature okay let's move to the next question thank you okay when conducting a quantitative risk analysis which of the following is most essential to evaluate the potential loss when conducting quantitative so we're not talking quality quantitative we're saying so scope is when conducting quantitative risk analysis which of the following is most essential to evaluate the potential loss option risk mitigation but risk mitigation we used when we done with the evaluation 
calculate the value of information asset because asset value is important till unless you don't know the value of asset we will not able to calculate the loss of asset example the server basically is a 70000 revenue for me and if any attack happen it reduced to $5000 and based on that we have a sle we have a aro so we get the num numeric values so until unless we don't have a value of information in numbers we cannot get the further quantitative report example like the asset value of the server is $70000 so I need to calculate the SLE. The formula is asset value into exposure factor. Asset value, suppose we have uh, $70,000. And exposure factor, suppose we're taking 100% default. So one cost, single loss cost me $70,000. $70, so until we don't know the value, we can't calculate the quantitative. Third is evaluate BI. Evaluate BI is one of the aspects to analyze the criticality. Okay, risk identification is a first step, which can be applicable for both qualitative and quantitative. So only close option, because keyword also talk about most, it means most frequently, is answer is B for beta. That's why the answer is B for beta. Okay. Calculate the value of information or asset. Let's move to the next question. Thank you. What is the most important it means regularly important frequency of a risk assessment in the enterprise option a business threats are constantly changing definitely based on a business we take everything makes sense technology threats are constantly changing makes sense people threats are constantly changing makes sense but user awareness is more about awareness training so d removed not necessary we do risk assessment in the case of people that regularly so we left with a and b Technology change makes sense, but business change, it makes more sense. So if you see the both option, the most requ required from the point of view is A for alpha. So answer is basically business threats are constantly changing. Based on that, we do the risk assessment frequency. Otherwise, risk assessment we have to do annually. Let's move to the next question. Thank you. Prab is a security consultant and recently he joined new organization. He conducted end-to-end -end security risk assessment of an organization. During an assessment, he discovered some issues and gap. Okay. His team post assessment has requested to implement some controls. Prab is preparing a proposal and need to submit same to the management for an approval. Okay. What is the best way to obtain the management commitment and support for information security initiative in the organization? So question saying that, you know, they have conducted risk assessment, so they have done with that. They, they have finalized the control and they need to prepare a proposal and submit to the management for getting an approval on that. So what we have to do. So we am a manager. My role is not to implement anything. So in order to convey something to management, we need to explain in the language. So option A, use outstanding example of successful attack of a competitor and explain how it impact your organization. Why we should take a reference of competitor and why should I explain the attack to the non-technical people? They will not be able to understand. We have a very limited time. Option B, ensure security risk are linked to the critical business goal. Huh. If any initiative, any kind of a requirement is mapped with the business goal, there is a higher chance they can approve that. Example, like if I'm going to explain them, we have a regular ransomware attacks, okay? They will not able to understand anything, but I'm going to explain them with the ransomware attack, the servers are down, data got encrypted, and we have facing a lot of losses in our revenue and all that. Then it makes sense because they know very well if the data is unavailable, we cannot able to process the client query. And if we, if we fail to process the client query, we might lose the business. So if your risk, if your details are linked with the business goal, makes sense. Option C, analyze the company security measure in perspective of industry standard, but by only industry standard. We have frameworks and all that. An assessment of a risk to the organization, but risk assessment is already done. We are in a stage of preparing a proposal to get the controls. So close option in this case is the B. So always remember whenever you prepare any kind of a case study and all that, it should be linked with the business goal. So then it is a higher chance to get an approval from the management. Let's move to the next question. Thank you. So question is, in which stage of SDLC security must be considered? So if you go by the process, security should be there in every phase. Option A, function requirement, but before function requirement, we have a initiation. So if you introduce security only in function, not in the initiation, there is a gap. Option B, development. Before development, we also have a functional requirement. If you introduce security in the development stage, I have to again go back to customer and get agreed on the functional requirement. It is good to introduce and design, but first we need to formalize in a functional requirement. So best thing is that as early as possible. So it must start from the phase one. 
that's what the answer is d for delta ha if the question talking about security functional requirement consider in which phase then answer is basically a if the question saying that in which particular phase we use the test case to test the application that is the development in which stage we do the security design then answer is design stage but security should start as early as possible in the organization let's move to the next question thank you okay which of the following which of the following best indicator an enterprise risk appetite compliance in the organization so following other indicators which best indicator is basically compliance best indicator enterprise risk appetite compliance in the organization option a residual risk and acceptable risk level definitely see that residual risk is a risk which is left after implementing control and that left is called as a acceptable risk level option b inherent risk inherent is basically risk before treatment okay it cannot be a risk appetite an acceptable risk level is definitely risk below the appetite a residual risk which exceed the risk capacity definitely that is not a appetite because appetite uh cannot go above the capacity implementation of countermeasure but after that risk is left that is basically called as a residual risk okay that is below the appetite so only close option in this case is basically a because the risk which is so if you see a example of a residual risk sorry risk appetite so right now the risk tolerance is here it went above the risk appetite we apply the control bring the risk below the appetite here so still after implementing control risk is left so that is my residual risk and it is below the appetite level so this overall representative as a risk appetite okay that's what the answer is basically a for alpha let's move to the next question thank you which of the following is a manner of a risk avoidance as i said we have a four type of risk response process the first is basically called as a risk avoidance in which we avoid the business that bring risk to the company it is a business call second is called as a risk mitigation in which we implement the control to reduce the risk to an acceptable level third is basically called as a transfer where we transfer the impact to third party and d option is basically called as a acceptance where the cost of control is higher than risk or risk is below the appetite so in this case question saying manner of risk avoidance installing an antivirus is a part of a risk mitigation purchase insurance is a part of a risk transfer exist the process that arise risk makes sense that is an avoidance and take no action against the risk that is more like a acceptance okay so answer is basically c for charlie because by exiting a process okay that arise risk to the company okay and d also makes sense because we are not taking any action against the risk but it depend if risk continue in the system or not but close option is basically c for charlie exit the process that arise the risk now let's move to the next question so answer is basically c for charlie risk officer has recommended several controls such as firewall and anti malware anti malware to protect the enterprise information system which risk response action has been taken definitely it's not a transfer they have introduced anti malware so it's a kind of a control to mitigate so b makes sense they are not accepting a risk here risk will be accept after seeing what is the level of residual risk they have risk avoidance definitely they are not talking about quitting the business and all that so answer is basically b because we introducing a control here let's move to the next question thank you which of the following is the first step in assessment option a identify vulnerability but against what identify threat against what evaluate control against what the first thing we need to identify assets then we will try to find the vulnerability threat associated with the asset that's why the answer is c for charlie so this is all from my side do let me know shall i make a video on cism domain 3 and do share your feedback in the comment section by which i can able to improve my sessions and uh, thank you for watching my videos gladiators and you are the important member in my family so my only objective is to make sure you get more knowledge you get more informations and keep rising cheers bye good day